proudly we hail. New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled, Four Find a Target. This is the story of the enterprise and initiative of four soldiers, members of the great team of America's hard-hitting armed forces. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Did you know that you can get ahead, enjoy your work, have security and a steady job, all when you enlist in the United States Army? Why, you'll get your first promotion when you've been in only a few months. There's a wide variety of jobs available. But most important, you'll be helping to preserve the national security of our country. Why don't you check at your local recruiting office and let them tell you how you can make the most of your life in the United States Army. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production for Find a Target. <laughs> Okay, Ted, we're next. Okay, Bill. Right. Hey, Gunner, Mac. Yeah. Take over. It's all yours. Right. Ready. Going, going, got. <laughs> How's that, huh? Oh, Lucretia scores again. Right on the nose. There's another hit. Looks like if all of us keep it up, our tank battalion's gonna win that gunnery competition for sure. That's a hit. I hope we can swing it. The old man set on us winning, so we get picked to go on the maneuvers. Yeah. I hear that he and Colonel Garrett have side bets on whose outfit will go. <laughs> it could be, but I guess it's more than that. Seems like they've been sort of rivals from clear back in Europe when they were both with General Patton's Third Army as company commanders. Oh, it goes further back than that. When they were second junk, they were both sweet on the same gal. And Colonel Garrett got her. Well, whatever it was, it'll all depend on the score we get here. Hey, how was that one, Sarge? On the button. Okay, there's a ceasefire signal. Let's get old Lucretia going. That's all for today. Hey, when are we going to get a driver for this buggy, Bill? I can't do two jobs, driving and gunner, when we're out in the field exercise. Well, counting our chickens, eh? Don't worry. We got a guy coming in tomorrow from school. From school? Gee, I thought you could get one of the guys from another crew. Where's your influence? Don't worry. He'll be broken in before we go. We can all help him out. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Hey, someone's looking for you, Sergeant. Over there in the shop. Know who it is? Ah, some PFC. Never saw him before. Okay, I'll take a look. Thanks. It's okay. You looking for me? You're Bill Dotson, I am. I am? Who are you? The name is Flynn. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed Flynn. That's supposed to mean something to me? Oh, I beg your pardon. PFC Michael Aloysius Flynn reporting for duty. All right, can it, soldier. Be civil. We'll get along fine. Been in to see the captain yet? Have I? Wow. What do you mean, wow? You didn't pull any of that bright-eyed stuff on him, did you? Well, no, I was only wishing to inject a note of cheer in an otherwise dull morning. Much too nice a day to be cooped up in the hot office. Come with me to the Casbah. Maybe you don't like the Casbah, huh? How about the snack bar? I buy you this soda. 
Oh, really? Isn't that big of you? Well, you know, if I made corporal, I could buy a malt. Oh, what a beautiful voice. Almost as pretty as a face that goes with it. And that figure. Wow. Well, good day now. I'm afraid I have to leave you. Uh, regretfully, of course, but this is my office. Office? Office? Isn't it a shame a beautiful girl like you must slave away in a dingy old office? Why, you should be in Hollywood. Uh, there are enough wolves around here, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Two. Hey, it's a good hitter we got. Nice, clean, double. Yeah, and Eason's at the plate now. If he can get another hit, even a single, it's the old ball game. Yeah, we got a good team this year. Looks like we got a good chance for the post-championship. Hey, speaking of championships, what about the results of the gunnery competition? When are they going to post them? Well, I got the word. Strictly on the grapevine now. We're in. No kidding. Straight stuff. How about that? We win the target shoot, get a chance to go on maneuvers, really show what we can do. We're stuck with that lunkhead Flynn. Oh, give the guy a chance. After all, he's been here only a week. What do you mean, a chance? We got only two weeks to get ready. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yesterday, he almost takes the corner off the maintenance shop trying to park. It's fair. He's going to make it. Come on, Fred, put on the steam. Wonderboy Flint. Yeah, give him credit for good taste and fast action. Look who he's dancing with. Huh? Oh, Sally Munch. Jeepers, what's she doing here in the service club? Uh, this must be her night as a volunteer hostess. Uh, he'll never get any place with her. Every guy on the post is interested in that girl. All she's interested in is a slide rule and a variation on the quantum theory, whatever that is. Yeah, I danced around one night. She talked like my algebra book used to read back in school. <laughs> uh, well, he's trying anyhow. Interrupted the other afternoon. I was asking you the meaning of your slaving away over a hot typewriter when you should be out on a sound stage somewhere whispering sweet nothings into the ear of a handsome leading man. I assume you do slave over a hot typewriter. I do not. Oh, well, what then? I uh, sometimes slave over an old IBM machine. I do statistical analyses. <laughs> Merciful heavens, what's that? Well, if you have about three or four hours sometime, maybe I could explain it to you. Well, how about now? Uh, I'm afraid the present atmosphere wouldn't help you in grasping the subject. I'd love to grasp the subject any time, any place. How about out on the terrace? <clears throat> May uh, I cut in? Oh, oh, hello, Dick. How are you? Uh, thank you so much, Mike. Well, don't think you're going to discourage me. I'm a very persistent character. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Hey, that's a treat. Watch it. Oops. Almost hit it, huh, Sergeant? Almost. For Pete's sake, Flynn, you got the easiest job in the whole throw. Can it, Max? Flynn, look out for that ditch. Yeah. I made it. Are you sure you got an eye test when you came in the Army? He made it, Bill. He made it. What are you griping about? We almost hit those boulders back there. Hey, yeah, I'm really getting the hang of it now. So, a clock in the morning. I don't know why everything has to start in the middle of the night, but that's the way it is. Yeah. Oh, this time it's four something. At least these maneuvers are a break from the same old stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I heard the old man's going to give three day passes to the whole company that's first to carry out its objective. Well, how come? I thought when we won the battalion competition and were picked for this, he made his point with Colonel Garrett. What's he steamed up about now? Well, didn't you hear the word? The maneuvers. Garrett's outfit is going to be the defending army. Oh, I get it. He and the old man are still fighting it out on the same old line. That's right. Hey, you guys, come on. Where's Flint? Oh, I don't know. He was around a minute ago. We'd be better off without that guy. I can't it, will you? I got troubles enough. I'm going to look for him. I'll meet you out with the parking area. Okay. Good morning. Who's this? Why, Michael Aloysius Flynn. Who else? Why, 
You have your nerve. It, it's two o'clock in the morning. Oh, and what a morning. Of course, the sun's not out yet, but I thought you might like to be awake, and it'll be sunrise in exactly three hours and eight minutes. I have nothing to say to you. Well, I thought you might like to say goodbye. Good, but... Goodbye? Where are you going? Oh, I'm going. Where? Sounds encouraging, anyway. What are you talking about? Hey, you must care. Oh. I'll be back anyway, so don't fret. And I'm... you called me up in the middle of the night to tell me that? I don't care no, if no, I... No, 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 I know you don't mean it. Hey, here you are. Don't you know we're late? Come on, get going. Oh, I gotta go now, darling. Be good. Oh. Uh, who in tarnation could you find to talk to at this hour of the night? My heart throbbed. Sally Munson? Who else? Boy, you really know how to win friends and influence people. I sure do. Well, I thought you said we were in a hurry. Come on, let's go. All right, ma'am. You were briefed yesterday on the March plan. But I want you to get this straight. We've got a long day ahead of us, especially you drivers. Now, you won't run into any difficulty if you'll keep the prescribed distance between you. And don't fall back too far, either. There's always a screwball motorist who'll try to cut in. And I want you to watch for him. Any questions? Okay, good luck. See you at the front. Oh, it's Dotson. Yes, Captain. You uh, bring up the rear. I can depend on you not to straggle. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, Dotson, you got a new driver. Uh, how's he making out? He'll be okay. Right. on the intercom. He's always griping about something, except when he's out on the baseball field. Yeah. How you doing, Flynn? Okay, Sarge, okay. Really got this old iron horse running smooth now. Yeah. You're creeping up on the guy ahead of us again. Drop her back ten feet. Okay, okay. Hey, okay. that was some picture at the movies last night, huh? I like the pun... That doggone thing drives you crazy. Talk, talk, talk like a bunch of old hands at a card oh, party. Gee, Bill, there's nothing else to do. Now start a game of rummy, then, you and Mac. Well, make it quiet, huh? You got all the breaks. At least you can get some air up there. Us, we might as well be down in a coal mine or something. I'm going to get me a canary so as I'll know when I'm about to keel over. Okay, okay. <laughs> I wish we'd get into some action. This is the next to the last day, and all we've done is hang around battalion headquarters. You'll get action, all right. Get a move on. Let's get this buggy washed. I can't see the idea of washing her when it's going to rain. Okay, okay. Just being held in reserve gives hey, me a pain hey, right where... Hey, everybody! Huh? I just heard that dog company was ambushed and knocked out. What? Hear that? There's your action. We'll be moving tonight. Meantime, hurry it up. Let's get the job yeah. done. We're listening to the Proudly We Hail production for Find a Target. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. Young man, be honest with yourself. Have you reached a standstill in life? Is each day just like any other? Are you worried about your future? And most important of all, are you feeling dissatisfied with yourself and your personal development? Well, if this description or any part of it fits you, it's just about time you investigated the opportunities waiting for you when you enlist in the United States Army. Every man in the Army has a skill, and more often than not, the Army taught him that skill in one of its fine schools. The Army offers an interesting present and a secure future, with plenty of promotions along the way. And above all, the Army molds you into a man, a man whose family, friends, and country are proud of him. If you think you can measure up, stop in at your nearest recruiting office and see if you can qualify to wear the mark of a man, the uniform of your United States Army. You're listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Four Find a Target. Colonel's orders are to stay off the radio. That's how we lost Dog Company. Remember, the enemy is monitoring. There's been too much chatter. 
I know this rain's not very comfortable, and we'll get going in a minute. Tomorrow's the last day. Now, things don't look so good for us. But if we can get this bunch of armored infantry through to the objective, we might still qualify for those passes the colonel promised. Okay? Now, you, Dudson. Yes, sir. You cover the rear as usual. There's always a chance of being encircled, so watch out. Yes, sir. Okay, let's get going. Button up now, and let's see if we can keep from getting put out of action like the others did. Thought it was stuffy before, did you? Oh, kid, I don't know how good I had it. Can't see a thing in this confounded rain. It's as black out as the inside of my hat. I feel just fine. Uh, nice and warm and cozy in here. What are you guys kicking about anyway? Oh, come on. Flynn, can you see anything ahead? No, can't see a thing. Uh, speed up a little. We must have dropped back too far. Right. Hey, hold it. Not too fast. In this rain, if we catch sight of them, we'll run over them before we can stop. It sure is blackout. Brother, I'm glad I'm not driving this buggy. See anything yet? Not yet. Shall I go a little faster? No, you better not. Hey, how about getting on the radio? You heard the captain say to stay off it. Hey, but this is desperate. Wouldn't want to go against orders. If you don't mind my saying so, Sarge, I think we'd have passed them by now if they were anywhere within a mile ahead of us. We weren't traveling over 15 miles an hour. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. That means, well, they, they, they must have turned off someplace, huh? Uh, there was an intersection back there, Sarge. They might have gone down that road. But that wasn't the plan. Well, something must have happened to change the plan. How about going back, taking a look, anyway? Well, they're not in front of us. Guess we'll have to take a chance. Okay, turn her around. Come on, Lucretia, baby. Get around there. <laughs> hey, you could turn on the radio and listen on the frequency. If we hear them, we'll know they're around somewhere, huh? Okay. Nah, there's nothing on it. Hey, here's that side road. Which way? Well, all we can do is flip a coin. Take a right, Flynn. Okay. Does anyone know where we are? Oh, don't ask silly questions. Well, we may still be in Texas, but at the rate we're going, we won't be long. Well, anyhow, it's a big state. Hey, how long has it been since we left the convoy? Well, since we knew for sure we'd lost them, about an hour. Stop a minute. I want to open up the hatch and take a look around. Right. Don't forget your umbrella, Bill. <laughs> That's better. There's a row of trees along a ridge over there. That mean anything to anybody? Hey, you sure it's a row of trees on a ridge? Yeah, why? What, the briefing this afternoon, you remember on the map? Boy, if we're where I think we are, wow. Wow, what? Wow, we're about five miles behind the enemy lines. Okay, take her up with the trees. Higher ground up there. Maybe I can see something. Hey, there's a bunch of tanks coming down the road there, see? Yeah. I, I can just make them out. You think it's our guys? Yeah, there's four tanks. And a jeep. Hey, the jeep's got a white flag. They're umpires. Well, let's let them have it. We got a good position. They'll never see us until we open up. Well, wait. They won't see us, but if we try to ambush them, those umpires will allow us one or maybe two hits, but then we'll be knocked out. Oh. Yeah, this way, if we lay low, who knows how much damage we can do before we get caught. All right. Be ready to fire in case they discover our position. Right, right. Ready, Mac? Oh, brother, what a beautiful shot. If I could just let go, I could pick them all off. One, two, three, four, like sitting ducks. <laughs> Hold your fire. Ah, nuts. Well, where do we go from here? Well, I guess we'd better keep away from the roads until we find out what the score is. I'll try to watch out for mines. Flynn, stop a minute. I see something. The telephone cable. We just cut it. I hope it's one of theirs. <laughs> That's really 
really black out now. Seven o'clock. Well, one thing, we don't have to worry about being seen, only heard. Hey, stop and cut the engine, Flynn. I'll see if I can get a line on where we are from that artillery. Hey! There's two guys coming across this field. Signal people, looking for that break. Hand me my carbine. Let's knock these characters out of the game. Okay, whoever you are, you've had it! I'm going out and settle this. I can't see from here. What's going on? Well, like you said, it's a couple of linemen. Hey, it looks like they're giving them some lip. Hey, there, there's a jeep stopping. Oh, umpires. Uh, that'll take care of the lip, I guess. Yeah. Well, come on, move over. Let me take a look. They're taking down their serial numbers. Yeah. And now they're pinning on the white out-of-action badges. <laughs> oh, good enough, huh? Okay, fellas, that does it. Let's go. Where to? Straight ahead. Right. Those umpires seem surprised to see us. Well, then we must be heading for something hot, Sarge. Yeah. Hey, look. They turned around. They're following us. That's right. Uh, I wonder what the idea is. They'd drop us if they didn't think we were heading for action, that's for sure. I hope so. I still got an itchy trigger finger from all those pretty sitting ducks you made me pass up. Last at Sanders. When is that phone coming back in? Well, they sent out two men, sir, but they haven't returned. Well, pull back Able Company, the infantry. Have them contact division. We've been cut off too long. Right. Hey, look. Ahead. The mine length will do. There's about ten guys there. You think they'll allow us all ten? Tell you in a minute. Well, the umpire's coming over now. Yeah. Hey, he's putting them all out. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the lieutenant's <laughs> handed something to Bill, huh? Looks like some kind of a map. What well, wonder what it is. What'd you get? What'd you get, Bill? Look at this boy. A map of all the minefields in the area. Oh, oh. kid. Brother, is this going to come in handy? Yeah, let me see that. Hey, look at this flag here. You know what that stands for? Wow. Battalion headquarters. I think we're going to be soon eligible for some three-day passes. Brother! <laughs> Am I a driving genius or ain't I? Okay, kid, you're all right. <laughs> What is this fool report here? Tanks breaking through. What tanks? The only tanks the other army has are all down in this section. I don't know what it means, sir. Are you sure they're all down there? Well, obviously they aren't. It doesn't look like it, sir. Let's see, there's that mine-laying platoon, uh, two linesmen, and now this report. The man got back through from Able Company. They're virtually wiped out. The umpires counted 51 dead, 23 wounded, and the rest demoralized That's and dispersed. Very strange situation. Was there anything else, sir? No, and... Try to get a messenger through to division. I've got to warn them of this new development. But, but that's where Able Company was going. I know. Sir? Yeah? Are we... Well, that is, don't you think... No, that... confound it, no. We'll stay here until we're ordered back. But, sir, if we're cut off, we, we can't be ordered back. Uh, then we'll stay. <laughs> Sarge, look at that old barn over there. It looks deserted. What about it? Well, a minute ago, the door opened and someone came out. I think this is it. Right. Get up as close as you can without racing the engine. If I see anything, I'll shoot. Oh, I wish I could be there to see old man Garrett's face when we open up. Sanders? Sanders? Yes, sir. All right, come here. <clears throat> uh... This is the message to send back to division. What? What's that? I'd say it was a tank. You'd sir. say. I know blasted well it is. All right, I got you all covered. Come out with your hands up. 
that. This is outrageous. This is battalion headquarters. Now, we're busy here. You're way outside. I'm sorry, sir, but I'm afraid I had the drop on you. Of course, you might take it up with those umpires over there in that jeep. Umpires? Where? Oh, yes. Blast it. I'd like to know how you did it, Sergeant. And so, Dodson, I want to congratulate you, as well as McGuire, Dixon, and Flynn. That was a wonderful job. <laughs> now, as a matter of fact, that's not quite strong enough. It was stupendous. I still don't know how you managed it. One thing, Captain. We got the best driver in the business. And that goes for me, too, sir. Well, here are your passes. Oh, Flynn, just a minute. Yes, sir? You'd uh, better stop by the first sergeant's desk on your way out. He says some girl's been calling you every day since we left. Sally something. Wow! <laughs> It shall not happen here. That is the unspoken prayer of every man in the United States Army. That is the unspoken reason for our growing military might. But the time has come to speak. The time has come to tell of that small phrase, those five words, it shall not happen here. Let us speak only to those young men of America who have not taken pause to think. Let's shout it in a voice that will reach into every city and village across the length and breadth of this great land. Young men, you are needed. You are needed to help preserve the peace. You are needed to serve in the United States Army to ensure for your loved ones that it shall not happen here. And while you serve, you'll be building a rewarding career for yourself. Everyone who wears the uniform of the United States Army is sharing in a service that is vital to our country. To each belongs the individual dignity which has characterized Army careers since the birth of our nation. In the Army, opportunity is open to all on an equal basis, affording its young members of today a chance to become technical specialists, instructors, leaders of tomorrow. You are urged to visit your local United States Army recruiting station at your earliest opportunity and ask about the technical careers in the United States Army. Remember, the need is urgent. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in next week at this same time for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>